there it comes out and obviously oh, it's relatively dry so a lot of it we'd probably tipped out you can see it's definitely been in there because it's full of rust and then here comes the actual component that's failed now we can disconnect these plugs and work out if this is going to be a serviceable motor got an E85 Z4M with us today at Reedish Motorsport for roof not working. Now we've done a video of this years ago when it was quite commonplace following the BMW instructions to replace the roof motor which involved roof off as per the BMW instructions. Now since then a lot of years have passed and lots of more procedures have been developed by owners and enthusiasts and it's now quite commonplace to relocate the roof motor which involves reaching through from the boot to retrieve the motor system, bringing it into the boot, trying to recover it or replacing it if absolutely necessary and then relocating it in the boot. So we are now in that process and this video is gonna show our version of that. So this car has come in with approximately 70, 76,000 miles. It's having a steering wheel retrimmed at the moment. That's why there's a donor steering wheel on there. And when you go to press the roof system and unlock the roof, you get a red light. You can hear the drive motors unlock at the top of the windscreen, but then there's absolutely no power from the hydraulic motor to actually open the roof itself. So nothing happens. When you let go, it realizes it's, it's during its open cycle and then just starts flashing to tell you've got a warning. If you do press it, lock it back up. The drive motors, you can hear lock in to the front at the top of the windscreen and it solves itself, or it did just now when I tried it. Sometimes it will lock again. I think I just heard it lock. There you go, so it's now finished its closed cycle, but that just shows the roof doesn't work. And now this video, we will work out and show the process that we go to relocate the roof motor. So once we've got the boot open, we can, uh, well, I can tell you that the roof motor system is well buried on the left-hand side over there. And first thing is we need to take, this is Z4M, so we need to take the battery section off, which is disconnecting the uh, tire inflation kit and lifting that out. Now these nuts and things are all finger tight already. We've had a look in this car. Not all the clips are in their correct position or doing their original job, but the inflation kit comes out as well. And then the battery cover simply finger unscrews the nuts on the top. And there's a little tool kit up there as well, which comes out and then it pops out simply that way to expose the battery. So now we're going to remove the luggage tray. We've taken the trim off the front. Now this car already had the clips missing on the side, so the hinges weren't even connected to the tray. So the hin there was no clips to take out. So somebody's probably already been here before because I found one of the cabling, there's the tray coming out now. One of these cables wasn't clipped in and is already hanging down anyway. So I think somebody's been in here maybe to try and solve the roof motor problem already. And that gives us great access now into the roof closing compartment where we're going to shortly go through and uh, try and retrieve the motor system. So now I'll show you the motor where that lives up in this area here. So we've got some cable ties on the back panel over there. And then that is the top of the motor bucket, which is a two part plastic component, which is the motor sits inside of. And it's usually the motor, the bucket that fills up with water and then just can't escape. So the motor is sat in water, which then just corrodes it. And because it's an electrical uh, hydraulic position, um, component, it just seizes eventually. So we can easily get to that now and hopefully drag that back through. Now we've undone the fixings for the left hand side piece, which is like the hinge system and a top cover. That simply comes out and then exposes a little bit more of the area. So we're reaching in through the cabin to see if there's any help offered to actually lift this roof motor and the double bucket system up. So it's all enclosed and that tape at the moment is holding the two parts of the bucket together. We don't believe it's gonna come out in one piece, but at least by lifting it up, we can now access the tape, either cut through or unpeel the tape and then separate the top bucket off. There we go, so the top bucket as we would call it, or the top cover has just been lifted off. And now we can see the motor and there's the hydraulic fluid in the reservoir and the jacket is present as well. So we're just reaching through now to retrieve the top cover and possibly the uh, jacket as well, which is this part here. Put it down on some protection cloth so it doesn't go on there. Any dampness to that, Luke, or is that a little, little bit damp? A few dribbles of water coming out, but nothing ridiculous. The most of it's probably gonna be in the bottom bucket. Okay, so we're just lifting the motor now out of the bucket and there comes the hydraulic roof motor. 
some of the uh, the case the protecting jacket we can see, which is just like a foam jacket, probably to try and isolate noise, I'd imagine, which is coming out. That one definitely is wet and rusty, so that tells us that it's roof motor sodden with water, and that's probably why it's seized. We can just see it sat up on the top now, on the left-hand side of the shelf, and. Um, it's still connected fluid wise so it's got cables that we just need to be delicate and careful with as we get access to it you can definitely see the corrosion color on the bottom of it so it's certainly rusted to a solid point i'd imagine Gearing up into the shelf that's what you're looking at which is the motor hydraulic assembly there's some banjo bolts down there and some fluid pipes going onto it two electrical connections at the bottom which are the closest part to us and rust covered coloured water seeping out of it which is contained on the plastic so it's safe it's not causing any damage we can mop that up shortly and that definitely uh, confirms why the roof's not working we now just need to bring it into the boot so we can carry out service work on it so we know the roof motor and the bucket assembly sit about here underneath the left hand side hinge and what we're doing is trying to separate the water filled bucket from the motor because as we bring the motor back we don't want to drag the the bucket with the rusty water into the boot area so whilst we're in that compartment, we're trying to turn it upside down to drain out through the natural drain process. And that's what we're seeing coming out down the bottom onto the floor, just to try and help clean, keep things clean when we send everything into the boot later on. So we believe we've separated all the cable ties and that's the bottom bucket, the one that would have been full of water that's caused the motor to fa fail or seize. There it comes out, obviously. Oh, it's relatively dry, so a lot of it we'd probably tipped out. You can see it's definitely been in there because it's full of rust and corrosion. So we can just put that to one side, get that out of the car for a minute to keep things clean. And then here comes the actual component that's failed with the electrical wiring going into the bottom and the hydraulic four pipes coming out the top that are connected to the banjo port. So now we can disconnect these plugs and work out if this is going to be a serviceable motor i.e can we retrieve it and reuse it or whether it's going to need rebuilding or ultimately replacing it at the worst case so now we've disconnected the wiring from the bottom of the motor and first of all testing the cabling through the car uh, luke's in the car and going to press the button on the roof now and hopefully we should see some voltage yep so we're getting power in to the motor so that all that system is working fine so now we can concentrate our efforts on the motor so we're now just going to do a resistance check on the motor uh, and see if there's any obvious issues so we've got we're going to spin to see if there's any dead spots on the motor for example so we've got one so it means it's open circuit there's no connection between the terminals going through the brushes somewhere or between that and the commutator so we're still on one which is totally open circuit spinning just slowly to see if there's any individual dead spots and uh, it looks like it's um, totally open no connection at all internally right so we've given it a technical adjustment which is basically just a tap on the outside and all of a sudden we've uh, now got resistance through it so it's not open circuit you can see we've gone down to pretty much zero there are some dead spots well or, or poor spots should we say where there's um, lots more issues but so far, um, we might have uh, stumbled across something that makes this usable. Again. So we've now plugged the terminals back in, Luke's in the car, and we're going to see if this now spins inside by pressing the button. Yes, it does. It turns. So we had a little bit of torque reaction there. So that's a good start. So now we're going to spin it for a little bit longer, just see if it will hold out. Yes, it does. It does carry on spinning. And the twitching is the fact that we're pressing the button and then letting go of it but the, the, um, we can see inside it is turning and I can hear it going, so that's a good sign so far. So we're now just filling the reservoir. Now this was uh, low on fluid and we've got the BMW fluid here, which is there's the part number if you need to buy some for yourself. And now we're just gonna fill the reservoir, not up, but we're just gonna get some fluid into it, do some testing, um, hopefully it'll self bleed and then recheck it. So we're now just cycling the motor via the button inside the car just to try and bleed the system and see if we get any pressure through to start moving the roof we've got new motors in stock so we know the fluid fill line uh, well they come from bmw so we've gone and copied that to make sure that we got our fluid level correct and you can see the fluid that it's reflecting across just that line there at the moment so just keep doing this a little bit more 
not only does it tell us that the motor is working and still spinning whereas it was dead before because we had open circuit but hopefully it will bleed the system and start the roof the roof operation so we've got this motor working now and also the pump so the fluids is traveling out through the lines to the hinges and the roof is operating I'm pleased to say what we found and why it didn't turn straight away or work straight away was because the emergency pull cord not only was that obviously probably been pulled because of the the problem when somebody found out the roof didn't work uh, but it was back in its position however the valve was seized that one there which is the emergency part of it was seized inside the pump housing that's to do with this bracket here so we've simply disconnected it for the moment and it was still seized in so we had to do a little bit of tapping to release that out you can see there's corrosion on the end of it now that emergency valve is open the fluid is able to be pumped through the valve uh, through the pipes and the roof is working so i'm just going to shut the boot and we're going to then have a look at this z4 roof operation and see uh, it in action okay should now work in its normal fashion, good speed, nice and smooth. Closes as well in the normal cycle you'd expect. Pressure is being generated, off it goes. And then shortly we'll latch into the front windscreen when the drive mechanisms lock, and then eventually the windows will go up as well. So that is one happy Z4 owner because we've saved them the expense of having to have the BMW repair method, which is roof off and motor replacement we've done it by pulling the motor through and also reviving it so it was a dead one that was showing open circuit we've got it back to life and now we can work on relocating it into the boot to make sure this doesn't happen again so just testing where to put the relocate the roof motor to now lots of different versions of this i mean they all tend to have to go on the left hand side um, some people put them up here um, one of our good friends, Alan, who does these uh, relocations, puts them in there and puts a nice trim cover over there. Some people put them behind. I mean, they don't really weigh much and they don't twist a huge amount, so they only need really a few cable ties. That's what people seem to put on them. We've done them behind the carpet before, and then we're just looking at this car, and this car's got um, further options as a Z4M. It's got the ULF module here, so not all cars are going to have this. Um, and it's also got the aerial diplexer there. So that's unique to option code 633, I think it is, which is Bluetooth preparation. So it's got higher brackets. And what we've done so far, which we're going to test with this to see if it's suitable. We know the fluid line is still plentiful and high up here. So we don't feel that it's going to run dry in any way, but obviously we're going to test that. Simply got two cable ties holding it to OEM bracket locations, which is meaning it's quite stable doesn't seem to rock we're going to test for vibrations and things like that the carpet trim which hides all of these bluetooth prep items is pretty uh, actually sits on it perfectly and doesn't really go any higher than the original bracket so once these are fitted back up we don't feel that you actually even see the relocation if this turns out to be a workable location we're going to test it now and if it doesn't work then we'll move it into a location on the left hand side so we're trying another location now just going to see which one's the better one we did have it before up on top of the uls and the um the audio deplexer but it was just pushing the top uh, carpet a little bit high so it would have meant trimming the top tray which we didn't really want to do if we didn't have to so we're going to try this location and decide which one of those two is going to be the better one so we've removed the ULF module just unbolted it off the bulkhead and that's allowed then us to get the motor which you almost can't see you can just see a little bit of the white reservoir over there actually through the bulkhead and it's now sat nicely on a little bit of the wiring loom there bear in mind it's a very lightweight non-sharp component and then the cable uh, the, the hydraulic fluid and the electric cables are cable tied to that bracket just there and it's surprisingly steady it's almost like it's wedged in it's not touching the bulkhead it doesn't feel that it can move or shift about or bounce about so that's quite nice because then we can put the carpet system back the tray goes in perfectly you don't see anything bulky pushing the carpet out it looks from when you're looking in the boot which we'll see in a minute it will look completely original Original. We'll now check the operation and then take a decision on which position to finish up with. We've reverted to the tried and tested method after two or three different locations. We tried hiding in the bulkhead and also on top of the ULF module brackets. Um, it didn't seem as good as this tried and tested method, which is in that sort of compartment on the left hand side, which is sort of quite hidden. Um, so obviously we think of something to trim that up, but um, it's in there and working quite nicely there. 
We finished the roof relocation work now. We've made a false panel as well. Got the same colored carpet as the standard BMW one. That's our false panel. Made a hardboard template, which is in there with a small little gap, which is where you hook your finger to pull it out. And it just fits with compression. Um, much like our good friend, Alan, who does these roof relocations, uh, he does that style and uh, we got the idea from him. Hopefully you won't mind too much, but it is a great way to finish off the boot, make it tidy, original, and obviously give some protection for the roof motor that now sits down there and if you didn't really know your z4s you hopefully wouldn't know that all that work had been done and there's now a roof motor relocated in that position so that's the end of the repair and it was totally successful the roof is now fully operational as you can see it's now in its stored away position ready for the owner to collect this vehicle and drive home and enjoy a little bit of the winter sun that we've got today so if you need your roof motor relocated or uh, revived say it's not working like this car uh, we can normally solve that and at the same time relocate that into the boot in a nice tidy manner like the video you've just watched. Give us a call at Reedish Motorsport and we'll be happy to advise you.